Welcome to Health Talk. Today, this is Dr. Ashish Chauhan, host for you, and we will be discussing about various issues related to one of the commonest reason a patient presents to the hospital. Yes, headache is indeed the one of the cause which brings lot of patient to the hospitals quite often in the normal time as well as during the emergency visits. To discuss that, we have with us Dr. Sudhir Kumar, a leading neurologist from Apollo Jubilee Hills. Hyderabad Dr Sudhir Kumar is a medical graduate from CMC Vellore and not only he did that he did his post graduation as well as DM in neurology also from the same institution he speaks hindi english telugu and tamil and with us today we'll be discussing about the various causes related to the headache and various ways you and me can handle it in our home as well as the various issues which we need to know as a patient welcome sir Thank you, Ashish. I'm very happy to be here and share about headaches. As you said, it's one of the commonest problems. I'll be happy to share the views about the headaches, mm-hmm. the diagnosis and treatment, and which could benefit our viewers a lot. How common is headache, uh, Dr. Sudhir? Headache is the commonest uh, problem because mm-hmm. almost 98 percent of people in their lifetime they get headaches at least once, mm-hmm. which means only two percent people mm-hmm. they live their entire life without getting headaches, mm-hmm. and out of them, 50 percent of them, so mm-hmm. half the population, mm-hmm. they have at least one severe headache or more, mm-hmm. for which they actually consult a doctor or they think of consulting a doctor. Mm-hmm. So it's a fairly common problem in the community. Okay, and when we say headache. uh what are the commonest causes of headache do we come across fortunately for us the most common cause of headaches are not serious mm-hmm. when i say serious means they are not life threatening mm-hmm. in that the commonest are migraines and tension headaches mm-hmm. so these two account for almost 70 to 80% of all causes of headache and then the other causes which are not so common mm-hmm. and they are serious also and that could include brain tumor brain hemorrhage infections and these things are fortunately for us less common so commonest are migraines and tension headaches are the commonest causes quite often we hear this term to migraine dr sudhir what is migraine i'm very sure every person nowadays has got this diagnosis written migraine a person who does not know how to speak english also says sir i have a migraine headache so what does migraine yeah i think it is important to understand what is migraine mm-hmm. every headache cannot be called as migraine mm-hmm. and to say migraine there are some fixed clinical criteria mm-hmm. so to diagnose migraine we don't need any test we don't mm-hmm. need a scan we don't need a blood test mm-hmm. but the patient's headaches has certain features mm-hmm. so the type of headache can be one sided or both sided mm-hmm. it should last for at least 4 hours mm-hmm. so if somebody gets headache which goes off in 5 or 10 minutes mm-hmm. it's not migraine mm-hmm. along with the headache they also have other symptoms like mm-hmm. nausea mm-hmm. or vomiting mm-hmm. and the headache tends to get worse when mm-hmm. they are exposed to light mm-hmm. or sound so mm-hmm. when they are having headache and they want to switch off the lights mm-hmm. or they wa- they don't want to talk to somebody mm-hmm. and these kind of headaches last for more than 4 hours mm-hmm. and less than 72 hours mm-hmm. so that is a typical feature of migraine and if somebody has that you know mm-hmm. once or repeatedly then we, one can say that he or she is suffering from migraine okay and what is the usual uh, age group which uh, gets attacked by this migraine migraine is a disease of young people mm-hmm. when i say this so it is the most productive age group mm-hmm. so it starts off in the early childhood adolescence mm-hmm. and it peaks off in the early adulthood so in the 20s and the 30s mm-hmm. that's the most common age group affected mm-hmm. and it is more common among women so there mm-hmm. is some theory that it is linked to hormones Mm-hmm. so young women they are the most commonly affected so if you look at you know let's say 100 p- uh, patients who have migraine mm-hmm. about 70 to 80 of them are women mm-hmm. and the remaining 20 to 30 percent are men okay. so it's a younger age group so by any chance it is related to you know periods and menarche like these things yes so in fact uh, you know the most of the migraines they get worse during periods uh-huh. so you know so they they say that you know just during the periods or one or two days before the periods begin or one or two after the period so those seven days mm-hmm. every patient who has migraine they most of them report that yes the my headaches are worse during those uh, those periods mm-hmm. and some women they have headaches only during the periods and that mm-hmm. is called as menstrual migraine mm-hmm. whereas other women who have migraine they say i have headaches other days also mm-hmm. but some of them are more during the periods or you know before or after Mm-hmm. so you know so it gets aggravated mm-hmm. and some small proportion can have headaches only during the period okay okay so um if a young girl comes with this uh, headache which is during the menstrual period time when do you think she should consult a physician so can any headache with a young age consider as a, as a migraine and can sit at home 
I think see if someone is it depends on the frequency. If mm-hmm. somebody gets one headache in a year or once in six months, mm-hmm. possibly it's all right to take a tablet of paracetamol or one of the usual over the counter painkillers, and mm-hmm. that's fine. But if someone starts getting frequently, mm-hmm. if they get free to frequent headaches, you know, in a school going person or college going or a working professional, mm-hmm. it affects their lifestyle. They cannot do the job properly. Mm-hmm. They need to miss the job. They need to miss the schools or colleges. Mm-hmm. So if it is happening frequently. Mm-hmm. then uh, they need treatment number one mm-hmm. and also taking so many painkillers mm-hmm. it will have their own side effects like oh, yes. affect the kidney liver kidney heart. failure yes. say. so that is so i think it depends on the frequency if somebody gets more than two times in a month mm-hmm. that is a definite criteria they should visit a doctor mm-hmm. and if they are getting less frequently mm-hmm. then over the counter analgesics like paracetamol may be fine mm-hmm. yeah and if they are getting better how or, frequently a migraine can present if somebody knows it's a migraine how often say it can be Four to five times in a month, or yeah, yeah. In fact, it can be daily also. Oh ho! So there is a term called as chronic daily headache or mm-hmm. chronic migraine, where patients get headaches more than fifteen days in a month. Mm-hmm. So if it is less than fifteen days in a month, we call it episodic migraine. Mm-hmm. Those who get more than fifteen days in a month, that is called chronic daily headache. Mm-hmm. So it can be daily also, and some less frequent. You know, some people get only once in three months or once in four months. So they are not affected so much. But even those who get occasionally, sometimes the headaches can go on for four or five days. Mm-hmm. So that's again it hampers their normal lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So the frequency can vary. It can be very infrequent, or it can become as frequent as almost daily headaches also. So once you have made a diagnosis of migraine, um, how do you think a person should tackle it himself or herself? Just taking a painkiller pills at home is okay, or what else do you suggest? I think there are uh, two groups of. treatment one is the drug treatment and mm-hmm. and before that is the non drug treatment okay so about half the improvement can be achieved without taking any drugs also okay so in that there are three things i always tell my patients one is to have adequate sleep 7 mm-hmm. to 8 hours of sleep at night yes nowadays there are so many distractions yes uh, whatsapp facebook yes. tv and so the number of and many people work through the nights yes. late nights mm-hmm. so the lack of sleep is one of the commonest triggering factors so yes. they should sleep adequately mm-hmm. second is not skipping any meals so mm-hmm. many people are in a hurry in the morning to leave for work mm-hmm. so they skip breakfast uh-huh. so skipping the breakfast skipping any meal or delaying the meals mm-hmm. that can be another important trigger so they can start having meals on the regular times mm-hmm. and third is easily said then done that is avoid stress and anxiety mm-hmm. any stress and tension can also trigger the headache episodes mm-hmm. so these three easily they can be done mm-hmm. and then there are certain trigger factors which are well known to trigger an, an headache episode i think chocolate and coffee i used to hear all the good things that people like aha uh-huh. they are the triggering factors. So, like chocolate, <laughs> cheese, ice cream, uh-huh. Chinese food. Uh-huh. So, one did not avoid blanket everything. Mm-hmm. So, if they know that yes, something has triggered their headache episode in the past, then they need to avoid. So, all this. So good I think that is a good message for our viewers. Yes, that they have to be themselves become a doctor to the yes. extent that they have to know what is triggering the headache. And then to avoid that works. Yes. Out so, good. so no blanket rule. Whatever triggers your headache episode, avoid those things. Mm-hmm. Not everything. What what we said here. Mm-hmm. And then uh, other than the triggering episodes, other things are you know many times the pain cannot be seen by other people, other family members. Yes. So and and these happen in a people who are you know they are employed. They are either housewives or they are mm-hmm. working or mm-hmm. they are children going to schools and colleges. So to be perceived as a functional. Yeah. So the family members feel that they are just acting t- mm-hmm. to avoid school or college or mm-hmm. the work. Mm. and as a result if you know if the sufferer knows that nobody understands them mm. anxiety sets in and they they feel more sick so anxiety and stress worsens the existing headache worsens the migraine headaches or okay. any most headaches get worse with anxiety and stress okay so we need to you know reduce that and for that the support of family members mm-hmm. and the you know people who stay the co workers who work with them mm-hmm. they also should understand that you know some do has migraine they will take you know leave from work mm-hmm. which may be you know once or twice or thrice in a month but mm-hmm. of course with the treatment yes. those the need to take leave and you know off from work will come down okay um, now when you talk about treatment when you said 50% is non pharmacological 50% is pharmacological so what is the main stay of treatment for so migraine so again uh, when we talk about treatment there are mainly two groups one is we have to take medicines to reduce the number of headaches Yes. and that is called preventive medication because mm-hmm. prevention is better than cure mm-hmm. and this is required for people who get headaches more than twice in a month mm-hmm. so anyone who has three or more headache episodes in a month mm-hmm. they need to be on preventive medications okay. and commonly we have medicines like sibelium mm-hmm. you know beta blockers like uh, propranolol or mm-hmm. cipla rintral mm-hmm. and then now we have topiramate commonly mm-hmm. sold as topamac yeah and uh, divalprex so these are the various four medications we have 
mm-hmm. which are given to reduce the number of headaches mm-hmm. and the choice depends on the person's age mm-hmm. and whether they are men or women mm-hmm. and then you know like things like sabelium and mm-hmm. uh, you know divalprex yes. these medicines cause weight gain ah, uh-huh. so and they are not you know they are to be avoided in young people because weight gain can be you know major risk factors for other metabolic diseases like mm-hmm. diabetes and hypertension yeah and whereas you know somebody who has kidney stones we have to avoid uh, topiramate mm-hmm. so so we need to discuss with the doctor what is the most suitable medicine for that person and then one of these medicines can be used mm-hmm. to reduce the number of headaches other medicines are required to relieve the pain so when mm-hmm. a patient gets the headache then we have medications like uh, this crocin pain relief or you know ibuprofen and then we have specific migraine medications like migraine or vasopressin yeah. and risatriptan are there like risatriptan mm-hmm. sumatriptan mm-hmm. so these the criteria is that they should not be taken more than twice in a day mm-hmm. and not more than four in a week okay. because there is also called analgesic overuse headache mm-hmm. so painkillers reduce the headaches mm-hmm. but if they are taken more than 15 mm-hmm. in a month mm-hmm. they also can cause pain in addition oh. to the other side mm-hmm. effects of those painkillers so double its food double its food mm-hmm. so the upper limit they say is 15 15 mm-hmm. painkiller tablets in a month that's mm-hmm. the highest mm-hmm. which makes it four in a week okay okay so if uh, no if there is a we have diagnosed this patient having a migraine what is the role of neuroimaging say do you advise ct scan mri because you just talked even about that there are pain headaches which can kill also yes so what are those causes so as a rule all patients with headache don't require scanning mm-hmm. because of two factors one is that almost 80 to 90% will not have any finding on the scan okay and it and it costs money in our community everything costs money and you know we are a, as a community we are not rich so we need to use resources wide, wisely mm-hmm. so most patients don't require headaches mm-hmm. but there are some indications some conditions when a patient must undergo a scan and what are they if the person says that the nature of my headaches have changed i was getting headache for the last 2 years mm-hmm. but last week or 2 weeks it is more severe mm-hmm. or the new area of head is affected mm-hmm. or it is lasting for a longer time mm-hmm. so then definitely a scan should be done okay or if the patient says that i have some other neurological deficit somebody mm-hmm. you know has double vision mm-hmm. or somebody who was not vomiting starts vomiting mm-hmm. somebody is notices mild weakness of the hand or leg okay then definitely the scanning should be done mm-hmm. or somebody says this is the most severe headache of my life time i mm-hmm. never had headache such severe okay it could be a condition what we call brain hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage mm-hmm. and which can be lethal also mm-hmm. so if somebody has the most severe headache of their life time definitely a scan should Must be done and then other condition is you know brain fever when somebody has got high grade fever ha yeah. fever then mm-hmm. scanning and lumbar puncture should be done so these are you know some indications where scanning is useful in other conditions pregnancy or just after delivery mm-hmm. a small group of women can develop headaches and then fits mm-hmm. and weakness of one side mm-hmm. so that's luckily for us it's not a common condition mm-hmm. all this condition what i told serious condition not common mm-hmm. so many time people start fearing in mm-hmm. the beginning itself yes that i got headache for now two days do i have brain tumor answer yes. is no mm-hmm. the risk of if you take all headaches with all patients who have headache mm-hmm. 1000 people only one or two have brain tumor so it's okay. not a common condition mm-hmm. so these are some of the conditions when we must do a brain scan okay so besides a migraine which we just not talked about it what is another commonest cause i think the 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 uh, refractive error is that what is common thing which we people get feel depression so people feel that way but other than migraine the next is tension headache uh-huh. now when i say tension headache it is not linked to the mental tension mm-hmm. the word came because the muscles in the back of neck mm-hmm. they go in, into tension or spasm mm-hmm. so typically they have more pain in the back of the head mm-hmm. it is usually worse in the evenings when mm-hmm. they do the work at the end of the day they get more headaches and they don't get nausea or vomiting what is a feature of migraine and also those headaches don't get worse with light or noise the photophobia so the, and nah, those things are not there okay. so that is tension headache is the second most common mm-hmm. and then if you look at you know other causes as you said depression so somebody mm-hmm. who is upset and sad mm-hmm. one of the features of that can be headache also mm-hmm. so and that is you know anxiety so there are some of the other you know psychiatric illnesses can cause headaches also mm-hmm. so these are luckily for us they are the most common causes and they are easily treatable mm-hmm. and they don't cause any serious disability as such mm-hmm. to to the affected people mm-hmm. uh, what is your advice to if a young person or anybody of any age comes with a headache to the casualty at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock say there are a lot of uh, doubt should i get admitted is the neuro imaging is that the final answer ct scan is normal mri is normal so i don't need uh, admission because that idea has to be clarified i believe doctors are not very good communicators so when they 
suggest somebody for admission patient gets scared that i am getting into the commercial hands i think nowadays that word commercial has become correct, a very correct. common for doctors so what is your advice to the person who lands up in trouble at night 2 o'clock 3 o'clock i think if a person has come to emergency room at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock mm-hmm. it means the headache is definitely severe yes not letting the person sleep peacefully mm-hmm. and possibly it is severe than previous headache episodes mm-hmm. so as a first step the emergency doctor definitely use uses analgesics injections painkiller injections if the pain is settling down there are no other neuro deficits mm-hmm. then the patient can be discharged and they can see the neurologist or the physician next day mm-hmm. now suppose even after giving the initial painkillers mm-hmm. the pain is not subsiding mm-hmm. then that is an indication to do a scanning mm-hmm. in emergency setting ct scan also is fine it picks up 80 to 90 percent of the problems mm-hmm. can be picked up and then only if the person has fever or next stiffness where we suspect brain fever mm-hmm. then the patient definitely needs admission so that the lumbar puncture the mm-hmm. fluid from the back can be removed yes to test for analysis mm-hmm. but almost you know most patients who get better in an hour or two with mm-hmm. painkiller treatment mm-hmm. they can be sent home mm-hmm. and they can see the doctor the next day also okay so yes i mean say Im- immediate treatment is taken and after that they can go back they can go it's back it's not yeah. like a heart attack where even if things are normal Correct. Personally, we suggest that you must have an observation timing for it. Correct. What about a headache after a surge, uh, kind of uh, injury, head injury? Yes. So CT scan normal because I think uh, unfortunately we are even the um, with the people not wearing helmet and lot of accidents happening. Lot of people land up in that kind of situation. So what is your suggestion for that? I think my first advice to everyone is to wear a helmet mm-hmm. because a helmet can save lives. Yes. And uh, so that is the first message. Now. Unfortunately, if somebody is not wearing a helmet and mm-hmm. has suffered head injury, mm-hmm. and CT scan is normal, yes. In such cases, if the patient is totally fine, mm-hmm. headache has subsided, they can go back. Mm-hmm. But in a small proportion of head injury, mm-hmm. the initial CT scan may be normal, mm-hmm. and the the bleeding can mm-hmm. be seen after 24 hours. Yes. So if headache is persisting, they need admission for 24 hours, mm-hmm. and maybe a repeat CT scan can be done after 24 hours. Mm-hmm. If that also normal, they can be sent home. Mm-hmm. But yes, you know, if the headache has subsided, CT scan normal. Mm-hmm. then possibly they can go home immediately also well, because if we miss out a patient with lucid interval exactly that uh, where the bleeding has starting and it has not shown up in first ct scan we can af- lose a patient as well correct so definitely to be on the safer side getting admitted post uh, head injury yes. is more safer to be considered correct. and if by any chance if you are sending those patients home we can tell the family and the patient mm-hmm. to look for certain signs mm-hmm. like if the headache is coming back mm-hmm. or if there is mild drowsiness they are not as awake as they should be okay or if they are feeling mild numbness weakness on one side yes or they start vomiting which mm-hmm. was not there before mm-hmm. then at that time any time of the day or night they should return mm-hmm. and get a repeat scanning done mm-hmm. if by chance they, if they have not stayed back and they have gone home mm-hmm. then they should be told to the patients okay. when we're talking about neuroimaging or ct scan mri how safe are these modalities because being a neurologist you must be writing every day uh, day in and day out so how safe are these ct scans and mri and how the, okay to go ahead with it and how much if you have uh, a possibility of needing it one for yourself how frequent will you go for it okay now between the ct scan and mri the there are two three things we have to understand yes so mri gives more information ct scan less information uh huh as a result mri is more costly ct scan is less costly so one thing is we can have a normal ct scan but mri can still show up something else can still that show has up to something be understood yes. and yes and uh, the regarding the side effects mri is absolutely safe mm-hmm. only thing some safety measures are required anybody yes. who has a metallic object mm-hmm. so it can be a pacemaker it can be an implant due to a trauma mm-hmm. so that has to be cross checked with the treating specialist mm-hmm. whether that is uh, mri safe or not nowadays mm-hmm. they have mri safe devices also mm-hmm. otherwise if any doubt is there they should not be taken up for mri mm-hmm. and uh, about 1% of people have claustrophobia because it's a small machine mm-hmm. and they get scared Yes. but barring these two factors if somebody has no metallic devices if they are not scared mm-hmm. then mri is fairly safe it uses magnetic principle mm-hmm. compared to that ct scan has radiation mm-hmm. now people can say what about one ct scan mm-hmm. so it's a cumulative because in the life you know somebody may need x ray so x rays and ct scan both have radiations mm-hmm. as far as possible we have to avoid it so every headache we won't go for a ct scan and get it done so some financial reasons are not there yes. you will suggest that you must go for mri it's safe for your body and gives you more information correct if the person is you know as i told earlier if somebody is having repeated headaches mm-hmm. not settling down mm-hmm. the nature of headaches have changed mm-hmm. or it is the most severe headache 
you know if the creative or somebody has got you know few neurological deficits mm-hmm. definitely mri is superior mm-hmm. sometimes the patient may be restless in the acute phase when they come in you know because for mri they need to lie down still for 15 or 20 minutes mm-hmm. if the person cannot lie down still Mm-hmm. then instead of not doing anything at that stage ct scan may be done it probably one ct scan 5 uh, minutes it takes and yeah. mri takes half an hour at least correct yes minutes. and also the you know uh, this radiation it's a cumulative so mm-hmm. those who are undergo more number of ct scans and x-rays mm-hmm. the risk of getting cancer radiation can cause increase the risk of cancer mm-hmm. so that is why we have to reduce the number of scans okay but yes getting one scan possibly may not be so risky okay so what's the final take home messages for our viewer that okay we you get a headache these are the first or these are main three thing you should keep in mind i think uh, for the viewers the commonest cause of headache is migraine mm-hmm. and uh, most migraines are harmless mm-hmm. if you are having once in 3 months or once in 4 months it's all right to take over the counter pills mm-hmm. but if you notice that the headaches are becoming more frequent or they are forcing them to take leave from their work or studies then that is a time to consult a doctor and then the doctor will decide whether you know it can be treated with migraine medicines and that's what normally they will do mm-hmm. and if the response is good then the medicines will be continued for few months some people when they get better they stop the medicines mm-hmm. then they come back mm-hmm. so the medicines will be continued till a time the headache frequency is less and then after that can be stopped and and as i told in some conditions where it's not looking like a typical migraine then the doctor may decide to go for a scan and try to look for other secondary causes mm-hmm. so and the importance of non drug treatment we already discussed mm-hmm. and that's important you know three things sleep well eat food on time mm-hmm. and then avoid stress and tension so these are three things mm-hmm. uh, which can reduce the frequency of migraine headaches quite a lot okay with all these things which you have realized that we can handle the migraine where all do we need uh, uh, conditions where we need to consult a neurosurgeon say you are the leading neurologist and there is a very common uh, 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 reason people go directly to the neurosurgeon also so would you like to enlighten the fact ki these these things when we find it out we need to refer to a patient to a neurosurgeon see one surgeon. thing uh, you have to understand is that a neurologist is the one who treats with medications or mm-hmm. medicines mm-hmm. and a neurosurgeon his treatment is with surgery yes so the conditions where surgery is required mm-hmm. we need to consult neurosurgeon mm-hmm. and there are about 600 diseases that can affect the brain Okay. Out of six hundred, only three conditions require surgery. Okay. One of them is brain tumor. Okay. Second is head injury requiring you know evacuation of the bleeding decompressive. Okay. And third is sometimes refractory terminal neuralgia or such pains mm-hmm. where a micro. So that's a minor condition. Mm-hmm. In most other conditions of the brain, mm-hmm. uh, surgery is not required. Mm-hmm. So as a rule, you know they should meet a neurologist. Mm-hmm. And if the neurologist decides mm-hmm. that okay. this is not I meaning this is one of those three conditions that i discussed mm-hmm. then the neurosurgeon can be consulted mm-hmm. so a surgeon is required for surgery mm-hmm. not for the medical treatment just like in every branch we have a physician and a surgeon mm-hmm. so either a general physician should be consulted mm-hmm. or a neurologist as the initial point of contact okay. in fact most of the headaches can be treated by a general physician with mm-hmm. a good md yes so i don't advise you know patients to directly visit a specialist it has yes. become a, you know in our country that It's people become a wrong trend yes. running to the specialist yes yes, yes. so even though i am a specialist mm-hmm. i feel that that is not the correct one yes. so they should visit a physician mm-hmm. and physician can treat mm-hmm. most of the condition mm-hmm. and if the physician feels that you no know, here a specialist inputs are required mm-hmm. because the headaches are not subsiding or you know usual medicines have failed mm-hmm. in migraine as we discussed sometimes you know 30% may not get adequate relief Uh-huh. so for them we have other treatments new treatments like botox injections uh-huh. and that can be offered to the patients mm-hmm. and there the role of specialist definitely is required botox i thought it was for the cosmetic surgery what is that yes in fact if you look at the history of botox uh-huh. it came in for neurology to treat post stroke spasticity and other conditions yes and then it went to cosmetic it mm-hmm. got extensively used uh-huh. and now it has made a comeback in the last 3 4 years with some new indications mm-hmm. so migraine is one such indication where botox uh, treatment where, works where do you give the injection where in the forehead or? yeah so we have fixed points are there so in the forehead uh-huh. temporalis muscle so and you know so and they are used by, given by very very small needles so yes. patients get anxious that we are going to inject in the head not in the head mm-hmm. so there is we inject in the small scalp muscles using a very very fine needle 
that is insulin the insulin needles insulin okay. needles so yes. must be very painless kind of it's thing. almost painless yes and as i said almost you know out of uh, so this you give it botox injection for a refractory cases of migraine or you have to do the uh, selection on the basis of all the patients are first offered medical treatment with mm-hmm. the medicines i desc- uh, described yeah with that about 60 or 70% will have good relief okay the remaining 30% don't get good relief mm-hmm. even among them mm-hmm. those who are having at least 15 days of headaches in a month okay that is the minimum criteria so somebody who should be suffering 15 days or more headaches in a month mm-hmm. who has not responded to the oral or you know the tablets mm-hmm. they are the candidates okay. and because it's expensive treatment you know so there are fixed criteria are there mm-hmm. as i told mm-hmm. and then only some patients are actual candidates who may benefit from this okay. and they can be given mm-hmm. and this also doesn't work indefinitely mm-hmm. the efficacy is there for 3 months sometimes 4 or 5 months okay. and then it may have to be repeated mm-hmm. I have heard a lot of people uh, believe that one surgical cause could be the hydrocephalus. What is hydrocephalus and how can it cause a headache and what is the way to go about it? Because I believe a couple of my viewers must be having the CSF shunting or ventricular shunting being done. So, would you yes. just enlighten us with that? So, as the word says, hydro means water, cephalus is brain. Mm-hmm. So, increase water in the brain. So, normally also in our brain there is water mm-hmm. and that is about 100 ml, 98 ml to be precise. Okay. Now, when this water becomes more mm-hmm. and that can be called as hydrocephalus, mm-hmm. it can happen either when more water is being produced mm-hmm. or if the water outlet mm-hmm. is blocked. Okay. Most commonly it's the second cause when the outlet is g- getting blocked mm-hmm. and that most commonly in our country it happens because of infection. Yes. And the commonest cause of infection is TB Medi- still, TB Tiba. meningitis. Mm-hmm. So those who are you know getting treated for TB meningitis, mm-hmm. they can get hydrocephalus mm-hmm. and in that first they get an improvement mm-hmm. and then the headache starts worsening mm-hmm. and when we do a CT scan we can pick up that. Mm-hmm. And as you said, uh, putting a small you know pipe or tube to drain that extra CSF. Mm-hmm. Uh, by a shunt surgery mm-hmm. that is a treatment of choice okay so and that relieves the pain that, that relieves so? the pain and then even if the pain has subsided mm-hmm. we don't need to remove the shunt tube it can mm-hmm. be left there okay it doesn't cause any harm i think that's what we call it as a ventricular peritoneal shunting shunt. yes and that can be left for lifetime that can be left for lifetime yes. how safe it is to have a vp shunting done and how costly it is and how uh, is it a daycare procedure or we need to be admitted in fact here i'm letting out a secret the uh-huh. first surgery a neurosurgeon learns in his training uh-huh. is doing a vp shunt okay other than the evacuation of a subdural hematoma because that can be life saving uh-huh. so it is one of the simplest surgeries for a neurosurgeon uh-huh. where now he's doing much more complicated surgeries uh-huh. quite safe and cost also are not much uh-huh. one of the you know less expensive surgical options okay that's fine so, today we have learnt a lot of stuff regarding uh, our doubts with respect to migraine or other causes of, uh, you know, headache. I believe uh, we all have learnt that, yes, uh, getting panicking is actually uh, worsening a headache. So, just staying calm, having the support of family is something which is important, as well as being in a regular touch with a physician is more important. But running to specialist is probably not a great idea. And having a family physician evaluate you is a better deal. And when in doubt, definitely neuroimaging helps with respect to the CT scan or MRI. And we believe that MRI is, is uh, gives a more information and it's slightly more safer as compared to the CT scan. Though both choices are okay to go ahead with, depending in terms of financial con- uh, you know condition we all have it. I really believe the symptoms like that of headache, which has a maximum presentation in each one of us would be handled better because of this talk we had a wonderful time with dr sudhir kumar and we will be meeting again to discuss various other topics related to the health show with you on the same channel same time same place thank you goodbye and thanks for coming with us dr sudhir may god bless you with your practice wherever you are and let the people get to know that a blessing of a christ is the one thing which works more along with the medicine to take care of human to take care of their uh, kind of pain as well as to to be able to promote the idea of heal teach and preach and that is what we thank you for coming all the way here and spending your precious time with us thank you sir thank you ashish for all the questions you had i'm sure our viewers have learned something And then as always, we are always available for the public. You know, whenever they require us, we are always there. And thank you all of you. Have a good day. Feel free to contact Apollo Hospital Jubilee Hills anytime and do meet Dr. Sudhir and give reference that you have viewed his program on this channel and you have come towards him so that he will take an extra, you know, care 
in your treatment and may god bless you with a quick recovery and keep you out of hospital as long as possible thank you dr sneer thank you ashish